Good morning, and welcome to Let's Talk Real Estate on 101.5 Sports Radio, Lakes Region. Today's show is presented by the Cisneros Realty Group, powered by EXP Realty, and sponsored by Dana Gunnarsson, agent at the Joe Suazo Allstate Insurance Office, Hudkins Law, Title, and Settlement, and NCT, Nano Coding Technologies. It's time to join our host at Let's Talk Real Estate. And good Saturday morning. That's what I say. <laughs> I know you do that, but I like doing this because this is our best of show. Yeah, the best of. So over the next couple of weeks, we're going to do a couple of best of shows. It's always good to look back. Yeah. And, and um, it's not our anniversary show yet. Right. So this is just the, the year-end reflection. We look back on uh, some of our best of shows and, and a best of guests. But uh, let's go back to the genesis and where it all started. I remember sitting at the pond hockey tournament doing a break on, uh, on WEEI and... <laughs> All of a sudden, you come up to my window, and we've we've known each other for several years. Yeah, and you said, "How do I get on the radio?" And I thought you <laughs> I thought you actually meant right there. You wanted to go on the radio, but uh, you had a different idea. Well, tell me, tell me about what got into you to 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 come up with this idea for a show. As I remember it, I was hounding you for about a year. <laughs> you were okay, and I just had so I grew up in a family that has done radio and television back in Venezuela. Right. Where I'm where I used to where I was mm-hmm. where I grew up. So uh I love radio and television. Um so now that I was involved and today in real estate, I say, well, how can I pair up one of my loves, which is television and radio, either one, with that with what I'm doing. I saw there was an opportunity in the market. I didn't hear of or know anything about a a talk show uh, about re- about real estate, and you were doing mortgages with me, and you've been in radio for thirty years, mm-hmm. so it was a no brainer to try and you know put something together and try it out. To my delight, <laughs> we now have done it for for eight wonderful months, and I'm having the time of my life. It's such a fun thing to do. So. It pays off to be persistent. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, people who know me know I'm pretty pretty persistent. And, you know, trying to convince the ownership of uh, a sports radio station to put on a real estate show on a Saturday morning. No kidding. That was a little bit of doing as Did well. Did you get any complaints when no, I first came on the air? No, no, it was very, very interesting. And a lot of people are actually, it's destination listening now. So people know that your show is on from 8.30 to 9 o'clock on uh, Saturday mornings. And people go and they gravitate to the show. So that's really, really good. Let's talk a little bit about your favorite shows. Do you want to go all the way back to the beginning? Yeah, I just want to mention, uh, for example, I'm very proud uh, our first guest on our first show was Dan O'Halloran, who mm-hmm. is the current president of the New Hampshire Association of Realtors. So um, I was very happy that he came. Uh, we talked about, you know, real, real, realtor things and things like that. So I just want to mention that. I'm not sure if that was a great interview or not. No, it was, a, it was your first interview. It was your first one. All right. Out. So let's, 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 play, let's play a little bit of it and, and see what, uh, what, what comes out. All right, Dan, we're dying to know. The first question is, what does the New Hampshire Association of Realtors do for residents in New Hampshire? All right, it's a great question. So the New Hampshire Association of Realtors is made up of over 5,500 realtors throughout the state um, and supports those realtors and, and their practice of real estate. On top of that, the New Hampshire Association of Realtor and its Realtors and its members um, have a strong focus on protecting home ownership throughout the state. And we do that through uh, various committees that we have at, the, at our state offices in Concord. Um, our public policy committee does amazing work with over 30 members. When you look at the volunteer hours alone for the association, there's over 3,000 volunteer hours put in each year um, by our Realtor members with the focus of home ownership and protecting it throughout our state. Okay, um, that's great. Now, of the initiatives uh, that are ongoing this year or new ones, which one would you like to uh, tell us about? Sure. Um, right now, uh, affordable housing is a, is a big topic, especially with our current market conditions with the tightness of inventory and higher prices. 
Um, so right now, the New Hampshire Housing Finance Authority has put forth a bill that's been passed by the Senate, and that bill says that you know, in the immediately upon approval, uh, $10 million will be put into the New Hampshire Housing uh, Authority Fund to be dispersed in our state to help with affordable housing projects. Um, each year thereafter, an additional 5,000, five, sorry, each year thereafter, an additional $5 million will come out of um, the New Hampshire state transfer tax and contribute to that fund. All right. And um, another of our very interesting um, guests was uh, Jamie Irving from Watermark Marine. And we talked about docks and we talked about um, uh, waterfront homes and things like that. So let's take a listen to some of his thoughts on docks on lakes. When considering buying a lakefront property, what should potential buyers consider regarding docks, beaches, or boathouses? That's a great question. Um, really, from any seller's point of view or buyer's point of view, uh, what they really want to be focused on is the history of whatever that is, whether it's a dock, a boathouse, a beach. Um, there are two ways that a, any of those structures can be um, um, referenced historically, and that's either through a permitting history through the Department of Environmental Services, or it can be considered as grandfathered. Um, so either one of those things would suffice for our purposes going for, for further in either reconstruction or additions, modifications, reconfigurations, things like that. What's the next one you want to go to? So, okay, and of course, I always want, I always want to have people on the show that could give valuable information all the time. So we had Steve Manjikian from Alpha Home Inspections, and he gave us some good tips. So uh, let's listen in a little bit about what he had to say. Probably one of the most anxiety-ridden components of getting a house sold or bought is the home inspection contingency. Absolutely. It brings so much anxiety, so much uncertainty. Everybody's like, oh, this is, we, we can't wait to get through the inspection to see if we're going to buy the house. Correct. I mean, we hear that all the time. Uh, so our job as we see it, is to prepare the client, which is usually a buyer, to make sure they understand exactly what they're buying and so that when they do buy it and they move in, there are no big expensive surprises. Correct. That's that's really our role now, in the whole thing. Have you had a situation where there are these huge deal breakers when they're not really? Sure. We had a situation a couple of weeks ago. The listing agent wasn't happy. Our inspector, we pride ourselves on doing a very thorough and what we call a non-alarming uh, report. That's, that, that's, I think, very fair, non-alarming. We know that our client did not hire us to talk them out of buying the house. Correct. Sometimes they know, here's what's happening to what we're finding now. L low inventory. Yes. People are pulling the trigger on a house they're not sure about. Correct. Yeah, so they gotta, you got to make a decision. you got to make a decision. They, they put a deposit down, they make a decision, and then they have this seven to ten days. That's right. Uh, to determine, to get through their home inspection, determine whether they're going to buy or not. Now this gives them time to really digest it. We had one client pull out of a deal, and I asked him why, and he said, I didn't realize how far it was from where I work. That's an example of when you're... A uh, buyer was so happy they f did an inspection because had they not done one, it would have been pretty bad. So th this was a long time ago. I don't know, 12 or 15 years ago. I'm on Francistown Turnpike, and there was a home that used to be a cooperage. They made barrels. I meet the client out there. was a gentleman. I give him a little preamble, tell him I'm going to inspect this, and I'm going to inspect this. And he goes, whoa, 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 sir. Uh, don't worry about that. We're not buying the house. I go, you're not buying the house? Why am I here to inspect it? He says, because my wife thinks we're buying the house. <laughs> <laughs> and then she's, she's going to read your report, and then we're not going to buy the house. <laughs> oh, my God. That's the funniest thing I've heard. Like, okay. Okay. That's so, a good one. So underneath the old cooperage, yeah. it was just on... You know, granite stone, wooden structure with a dirt crawl space. I wouldn't even poured footings. And there was things living under. I crawled under there. We crawl crawl spaces, which okay. is probably one of the worst parts of All our right. jobs. What, what are some, some serious uh, bad things that you've uncovered that maybe nobody knew were there, but sure. you uncovered? You know, the most common thing that we discover, I think, that people have no idea is attic mold. 
Attic mold. You probably see it all the time, making I deals do. more difficult to close. We do. It's really a pretty simple fix. It's finite. Yeah. It's not like, you know, we don't know what to do. Yeah. And of course, there was Dana Beltate. Now, Dana's a good friend of mine. He is like a scientist of mold. I mean, this guy knows mold inside out. If I remember right, he scared the heck out of all of us. He did. So let's play a little bit about how to get scared. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Here he is, Dana Beltate from A1 Mold. Well, mold is everywhere and causes a lot of scary stuff on TV and on the internet about mold. But in most cases, it's a pretty minor issue that can be cleaned up. Everyone knows that dank, musty type odor of a, of a wet tent or a wet dog or a wet horse. That type of smell is, is usually some type of fungus growing. Okay. We've heard of the famous or terrifying black mold. What is black mold and what is not black mold? Well, there's about 99,000 known species of black mold. Out of those, only about seven are toxic. Wow. However, a lot of them are allergenic, so a lot of people might be allergic to mold and think it's toxic mold causing issues. It may be the mold causing the issue, but it may not be toxic in most cases. Thanks for listening this morning. This is Let's Talk Real Estate on WEEI 101.5 Sports Radio, Lakes Region. Dana, um, so we do the home inspection or the, the seller wants to put the home on the market. They know they have a mold problem and then decide to kind of camouflage it by painting over it. Does that work? No, painting over the mold is only going to hide the issue. In most cases, rolling it's or spraying is going to blow the mold spore everywhere else in the house and probably distribute it even further. Any place that's damp, it's going to grow there. And it's also sandwiching that moisture into the walls or ceiling, wherever the mold is, and it's causing it to decay the structure even faster. All right, I'm getting, <laughs> I'm getting scared or more. All right, next question. Uh, do over-the-counter mold remedies work, and what are they? No, there's a whole plethora of... of you know, items you can purchase at the big box stores and Walmart and everything else, but 99% of them contain bleach or acid or both, and none of those actually kill mold. All it does is turn it clear for a short period of time. What kills mold? Actually, you need to use serious chemistries such as quashiary ammonias and or EPA-approved fungicides. And that's why when you have mold, you have to call in the experts. Correct. You're not going to be able to buy what I use over the counter, and you're not going to get the results you want. Okay. Another question I always get is, can I test for mold myself? Yeah, there's all kinds of cheap mold test kits you can buy. However, all they're going to tell you is you have mold, and if you're testing for mold, you already know you have mold, so they're really a waste of money. They're not going to tell you your colony-forming unit count and your effects on human health that a real air quality test is going to tell and you. What are the most common areas where uh, you find mold? Well, most people see some amount of mold in their bathrooms. Uh, left and right lower tub and shower areas that are most common for decay. Uh, around and back of toilets, if you have uh, well water, you're going to get condensation mold there. Uh, and typically your attics and your basements, if they're not properly ventilated, are going to have some type of mold, especially in the one when you've got a lot of damp basements. So this is uh, Karina Cisneros, uh, Let's Talk Real Estate. We're listening to some of the best of the best that we have this year. So stay tuned while we come back after these messages from our sponsors.